for a normal service, um, e.g. the 1500 mile or 3000 mile service, you start down basically, you put the bike up on the blocks as we have here and one of the first things we do is we put a tray under the engine to take the engine oil and while that's draining out we would then proceed with the rest of the service. Um, basically it's spark plug removal and change, inspection of that to make sure that the engine is running at the correct mixture. Um, the carburetor assembly will be completely disconnected and the carburetor taken off, completely dismantled and cleaned. Um, also when you're doing that you can also tell if you've got rust from the petrol tank or actually water in the petrol which will affect the way the engine actually runs. Um, once we've done that then there would normally be a block put under the back which would lift the back up, enable us to take the back wheel off. Obviously this is for inspection of brake shoes. Um, oil seal also in the back wheel to make sure that you've got not losing engine oil onto the brakes themselves. That would then be blown out. The brake shoes um, checked for wear once everything's clean, back hub put back together and the rear brake adjusted up. Flywheel itself, um, flywheel will come off for inspection of the points and the general condition inside. Uh, if the points aren't excessively worn then the flywheel is just put back on and re the points are reset uh, to the correct uh, gap. If the points need changing obviously they're changed then. Once the carb's been um, cleaned it's just put back on, all the cables are then connected and any adjustments made as necessary. I say new spark plug. Things like this are not good um, when you've got wires that are just taped together there should be proper connections made to these. You can get moisture in there which will then cause either failure of the engine, bulbs blowing through, shorting out through the moisture in there. So things like this can be done um, obviously at the owner's permission because sometimes they just want the actual basic service and just informed of anything else that might be needed. Right, from there we'll move to the front of the bike. Uh, right, moving on to the front then Again, we're looking for faults on the particular model, this Vespa. You've got sideways play, or if you find sideways play in the front wheel, literally holding this and physically trying to move the wheel sideways. If there is any play, then you have trouble in the bearings on the inside of the hub, which is on the other side here. Failing that, then it's normal, just taking the hub off, blowing out the dust from the brakes, um, making sure there's no grease or anything in there, putting the hub back on once it's all nice and clean and readjusting the brake. The brake adjustment being down here and obviously that you've got the correct movement on the lever from the handlebars. Once that side's done, also on the movement you'll be seeing that you've got swivel links on the top, you've got your suspension leg, also play in here will show up um, on the road test further on which is after everything else is done on the bike. Also on the front end obviously you must check the steering and that the forks will move from side to side freely. Um, this one is over tight and it does move in a threepenny bit type fashion. Uh, this isn't, this is, well it's slightly dangerous. Um, it should be rectified or at least the owner should be told if he then wants to go further on it's up to the owner. From there, um, once all the front end, the cables and everything else are checked, gear cables are then adjusted, brakes, tyre pressures are checked, tyres are also checked around here for cracking, uh, cuts which can be caused through hitting curbs. Once everything like that is checked, it then goes to the road test. On removal of the flywheel, find the stator plate with the points. Uh, one common fault on the top of the points to look for is it should be a little circuit. On these, these are missing. These points can then move up and down and obviously come out of adjustment. Also checking that the solder onto the condenser and all the little solder joints around should all be clean and obviously no loose wires like this one. 
once everything is then checked and put back, if the points need to be replaced, they can be put in in this position. Then the whole stator plate is then put back underneath the flywheel. Once everything is then put on, the actual adjustments of the points and uh, the setting is then set using a feeler gauge set at 15 thou, which it says in any of the maintenance manuals. In the flywheel, you have an aperture there, which when turning the flywheel round, the cam will operate the points opening and closing them. When the point gap is on the maximum open, there should be a 15 thou gap. If the gap is smaller, with the adjusting screw, the gap can then be set as per the manufacturers. When you take the top off the carburetor, um, you will find the air filter as shown in here. Now this air filter has also got to be removed. Um, the air filter itself can be checked that it doesn't got dirt or anything in it. If it has then blown out. Um, these ones on the Vespa can be washed, but again they must be put back actually into the bike dry. On removal of that, you then actually come to the carburetor mouth as shown here. The two jets. The main one being there, which you just unscrew and check that the small aperture at the bottom of the jet is absolutely clear. You also have the pilot jet, or the idling jet, which is the small one next to it. Again, the same procedure. The top of this, uh, which is the actual float chamber, can be taken off, and inside there you can see if there's water or any dirt that has come through from the tank. If that is the case, then the tank itself should actually be checked to make sure that uh, for dirt content and if necessary, completely flushed out. I'm putting the carburetor back on. At the back of the carburetor is the actual air mixture screw. Now this is normally factory set, but if it has been disturbed, then it is general, it's about one and a half turns out from the seat to be reset. Once in position, the two cables, the choke and the throttle are just linked up. Underneath the cowling, obviously, we have the barrel and piston assembly. Uh, although not part of the service, um, through time, uh, time to time, after quite a few thousand miles, each bike will need a decoke. The actual procedure is on removing the barrel and piston. You find things similar to this that have done quite a bit of mileage. The muck, which is accumulated all the way around the fins, does not help for cooling and can cause overheating of engines. Carbon deposits within the port reduce the actual size of the port and a loss of power in the actual engine itself is felt. Another main problem is on the piston, which obviously runs inside the barrel. Uh, through a loss of power can cause the actual rings actually sticking inside the piston. This will then cause the piston, although running up and down, to not seal properly and the bike will eventually stop and will not be able to run until this fault is actually remedied. For the deco, as I said, we have the assembly, which is like this, sitting under here. On removal of that, you then find, first thing off, the cylinder head. The spark plug can then be taken out. The actual colour of the inside of the plug will tell you uh, whether the actual right heat range of plug is used. The colour of the plug around the outside will tell you whether the engine is running at the correct mixture. If any adjustment is needed, then we then go back to the carburetor, carburetor for the adjustment. But on normal, um, saying that we're just doing a general maintenance work, the plug can be then cleaned um, and the gap itself reset, again using the feeler gauge, set at 25 thou this time, inserted in there until it is just a push fit in. On the decoking, uh, the first thing is the crown of the piston, the crown of the cylinder head should be cleaned um, as shown here. All this muck around here can also be removed as it will affect the actual cooling down of the engine itself. The piston again, the carbon deposits on the top can be scraped off. Care must be taken not to damage the crown of the piston itself. When doing this, the ring should be removed and any dirt or carbon that is in or in the actual ring grooves should be scraped out. Again, care should be taken not to damage the piston. 
having taken the piston out, um, there's one little tip. You do get cracks forming in the piston through general wear coming up from the corner of the cutouts from the windows. If a crack is found then obviously the piston should be replaced. Going to the barrel, the exhaust port obviously is the thing that's going to coke up and this will result in a terrific loss of power if the coke is too thick. Again, cleaned out, all the coke scraped out. New gaskets obviously, barrel itself cleaned. And when putting back on, care should be taken that there's no loose carbon laying in the bottom of the barrel when putting the piston on, as this will obviously come up through the transfer ports and damage the actual piston itself. sits, it sits in a cup and you'll find little marks on the cup where this stops each time, it's where the balls go over from one groove to another. If there are marks in the seat then just change the seat. And going back and we'll spin the wheel. So. Um, that rubbing, that's just your brakes. Possibly too much adjustment just on one, that's all. Ease it off, you can do, but generally that's not too bad. Wheel alignment, no buckles. It's one thing I forgot to mention buckle wheels. You go ahead, mention it. <laughs> we haven't got a sound, have we? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, right, on checking the tyres, you must also check for buckle wheels. Um, if you do find cuts in the tyre where someone's hit a kerb, possibility is that they've actually buckled the rim. If the rim is buckled more than generally about eighth of an inch then the rim should be changed as this wheel fail an MOT. Um, I think that's about it actually. Not see anything else. Yeah, that's it. <laughs>